With fuel prices spiraling out of control, many people are becoming desperate to find alternatives. It's not that alternatives haven't been there all along. They've simply been cloaked in secrecy and suppressed, all to promote the continued use of oil, the one commodity that controls most of our lives. Thomas Vallone is a physicist and engineer who also publishes Future Energy magazine. His day job is as a patent examiner for the U.S. government. This puts him in direct contact with many of these exotic technologies, technologies that could have changed the future condition of our beautiful planet. One of the most profound new automobile breakthroughs was the water car. So speaking of the air cars, Stanley Myers, this is an incredible story. He's passed away in the last several months. Um, incredible. It, it appeared everyone was excited about his, his invention. Now, you talked to Stanley before he passed away. What happened? What happened to him when he tried to get this out? Well, Stan Myers told me at, at dinner, when we had dinner at a, a conference, that um, he had the experience of applying for a patent on a car that would run on water. And the interesting thing is his invention was designed to, um, uh, to uh, provide an easy, low energy electrolysis of water. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, he'd be supplying the, um, the cylinders of a standard engine with the hydrogen necessary to combust, hydrogen and oxygen necessary to combust and recombine. And it just requires a little bit of uh, change in the carburetor. So, so the patent application was in, and all of a sudden he gets a call from the Pentagon saying that he has to come to the Pentagon the next day. And he refused, and he, luckily he's a, a, he was a, a former military person who had experience with, with their um, techniques or their traditions. Um, but then a couple uh, Pentagon people showed up at his door the next day, and so he had to go with them. Um, uh, he didn't have a choice. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. So the interesting confrontation was that and I forgot the type of the rank that was maybe a general or, or uh, whoever the important uh, Pentagon official was that was confronting him. They explained to him that his patent was going to be secretized. And, and this is a standard procedure for something that has national interest. And also over 4,000 patents have suffered that at, at the patent office already. What does this mean when they're secretized? Well, they end up in a vault and they sit there for at least 50 years. And why were they going to do this to his technology? Yeah, actually in, in their particular point of view, the Pentagon felt that they wanted to use this technology for their own military vehicles. And he explained that if, it, if they keep it secret for themselves, then the rest of the world will also get ahead of us. Um, Stan Myers was very strategic in his uh, description of, of the political and the military disadvantage that will result from that one-sided unilateral approach to deprive the United States of this technology and yet the rest of the world still has access to it. And he explained for some reason that his um, patent application or his papers, something had already been released, much like uh, Ken Shoulders did. Ken Shoulders used the exact same technique when the uh, officials uh, military officials arrived at his door. Explain Ken Childers. Well, Ken Childers had one of the, the top rated um, um, national interest invention for, for several years on the DIA list. And this is recounted in the, um, in the book by Taggart. Um, it's a field uh, type of book. Very interesting interview with Shoulders and Ken Put Lynn off. McTaggart, you're talking about yes. in the field. Yes. Lynn we McTaggart. With her. Mm -hmm. And her book recounts this mm -hmm. exact story. Mm -hmm. So so when I heard it from Ken Shoulders, I didn't know it had already been documented. Yes. But but Ken's approach was he knew that if you get some re record, like a, la a notebook or an actual published book, out of the country, then when they show up the, at the door to give you the, the papers, your invention being classified, um, you, you basically just tell them too late. And he did. And unfortunately, the, the military official got red in the face and extremely angry. <laughs> uh, no kidding. Well, Stanley's not here anymore. Right. Yeah. But the, the, the issue was there that he did convince them, Stanley Myers did convince the Pentagon official not to classify that particular invention. He did receive the patent. Unfortunately, he didn't get too many people to market it or to buy the, the license to produce it. And there's a lot of conspiracy stories of even his last day when he had dinner with someone that he was negotiating to license the invention and he ran out of the restaurant saying he's been poisoned. 
You'll learn more from this interview regarding the mired and intriguing world of new energy sources than in any other single interview. For the full interview, go to ConsciousMediaNetwork.com.